Okay. So Josh Howerton, Lake Point Church in Texas. We have a clip here because he did have a sermon that he did recently on how to vote like Jesus. And so I pulled a couple clips from it because it's provocative. And, you know, whatever we hear tonight, I, I don't like this particular style of pastoring. It, this is more of like a political speech than a... Actually, I'm not positive it was a Sunday morning. If it wasn't a Sunday morning, forgive me. But if this stuff happens on Sunday morning, it's like, you're not being a pastor. You're a political operative. I think we can go back... And I didn't disagree with all of it. Oh. We right. should watch a clip and then react to it. But I, I will say, we. I think we... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my iPad just died. I'm just kidding. I think we can go back in uh, Time. the historical uh voting uh, i don't know not reg- register or you know the just the statistics and see how jesus huh? did vote i'm pretty sure they they have that back in the roman empire i think so yeah yeah just check your abacus <laughs> they, so they had to put a blood blood fingerprint jeff can you pull up the uh there we go. thank you sir so in the Bible, God uh, has established three institutions that he establishes in the Bible. God Pause establishes it. the family in the book. So just so everybody knows, that's Elon Musk's little brother. All right, continue. This is Genesis 2. <laughs> Andy, God stop with that look. The church. the church is officially established in the book of Acts. And then the Bible also teaches that the government was God's idea, that God established the state, the institution of the state. I want you to see this. This is from Romans chapter 13. It says, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities because those authorities, the authorities that exist have been established by God. So in all these clips, I, I have them time stamped. I don't have the end point. So it's really just, okay. That was kind of a general part. Romans 13, Christians love to use this one. Did anybody when, fact check this? When their, when their president You're gets in. You're the producer. In, this is your job. That hey, actually. <clears throat> look it up, Jamie. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm on it. <laughs> so that you're, are you going to fact check that verse? <laughs> yeah. Uh, let everyone be subject to Did the governing Paul really authorities. Say that was Paul really talking about that? I, the authorities. That I exist don't pretend to, to understand this particular verse, given that Paul later goes on to be executed by the state, presumably for not following the state. Not fact checking. I mean, do you guys have any thoughts on that? Like, Paul. Paul died. He was martyred. He did what? It, well, he stuck to his guns. Jesus, you can make an argument, like whatever cosmically is going on with God redeeming the world through Jesus' death and resurrection, in physical, tangible terms, Jesus was killed uh, with a partnership between some of the, the Jewish authorities of the day and the state. He Rome. doesn't, at- he, well, he doesn't attempt to subvert the governing authorities. Uh, not to survive. There's a couple of nuggets like the the go the extra mile and if somebody wants their cloak, give it to them. And there's some Roman undertones of subverting Roman authority there. Um, but yeah, but that's a kill him with kindness. That's well, not to not to break any laws either. Yeah. So he he doesn't break any laws. I mean, the subversion is more like I'm gonna it's kill him with kindness, right? Yeah. Um, or I I'd have more to say about that, but uh, we won't do that right now. Um. But do, I, I, I could keep, I so, could keep word salading. I got a lot of thoughts. No, it's but okay. Go the, ahead. The part that probably sticks out is, I'm, I'm guessing for you is that uh, the authorities that have exist have been established by God. And what does that mean? Yeah, what does that mean? Because oftentimes, and in, in my personal context, that gets thrown around when our person is in power. But we seem to forget this verse when the other person's in power. The so, other team is in power. So the the quick, easy test for this is, ha, has God established dictators? Yeah. And I, I say yes, as in, that's a good test. <laughs> I'm not agreeing. <laughs> I caught myself. I'm glad I caught myself. <laughs> I my personal uh, theology is You no. can email him, Zach at Bros Bibles Beer. He believes that Hitler came from God. I wouldn't call myself a process theologian, but the idea of the world is in process and the world is constantly in creation mode where choices matter. Um, I am sympathetic to that. So the idea of God ordaining everything good and bad in the world, 
Uh, while you can find some script biblical support for that, you can find plenty of examples where that's not the case. And and I definitely lean towards. Um, no, what is what it, what does it look like to be? What did Christ do? How did Christ operate in the world? And what if we interpret everything else through that? And does that change things? Maybe. Jeff, do you have something yeah. to say? <clears throat> yeah. So I I did look up the. Um, the governing authorities in the Bible and, you know, all form, all forms of government, including rulers and leaders are established by God and should be submitted to by citizens. Just going down to limits to authority while submission is encouraged. The Bible also implies that government authority is not absolute and should not contradict God's laws. And that's a slippery slope in our society and that there are things that are happening within government that might possibly be going against God's laws. Why would God establish an authority that he wants you to not go, to not follow with, right? Well, the the people are the governing authority and, and so uh, of government. So it's like we have government and humans are running for the us right in, in for america in the perfect in the best sense where sure. it's working well is yes they represent the will of the people whether that happens or not i think it's pretty clear as it doesn't right but that's at least the direction in the biblical context and where i have kind of a rub with josh is like rub your neighbor yeah rub your neighbor i love that that's the theme um, thou shalt rub your neighbor. And literally the way I mispronounce words sometimes, I will say rub your neighbor and I'll <laughs> I'll think I said love to one of you guys. I'll catch it. Don't worry. I'll, I'll pick that oh. up. I'm watching. I'm that, is, that is bla- Look at you. That's so, blasphemy can, of the Holy Spirit there, Zach. Take off the PMP real quick, but I do have a Bible verse to read about um, biblical stuff. Um, so Israel asked God for a king and Samuel was the prophet that was in his old age, Israel was uh, going about it. This is a, l- a little bit of a long passage, but I think it's worth it for the context. Well, let's Actually, just act like, it? let's just act like you're sure. the government, Zach, and we're going to submit to... Would you like me to read it? Sure. Yes. You read <laughs> it, because I'm going to mispronounce things. Okay, Israel asks God for a... This is a asks God for a long... Oh, well, I don't know what that's about. That's weird. I'm first, dyslexic. First Samuel uh, 8... 21, 8, 4, <laughs> first Samuel, chapter 4, 8 through 21. I feel like we're in second grade. I'm like, hey, Andy, it's your time to read. I hand him a paper you know what? it has like penises drawn on it. Why don't like, we just, yeah, yeah, there's no words. You guys, there's no words on here. It's just. <laughs> Andy's just going to yes and my it's premise. A picture, Go. It's a picture book. I feel like I'm in super bad right now. <laughs> uh, so all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. They said to him, you are old, and your sons do not follow your ways. Lame. Right, Jeff? Now appoint a king to lead us, such as all the other nations have. But when they said, give us a king to lead us, this displeased Samuel. So he prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to him, listen to all the, that the people are saying to you. It is not that you have been, or sorry, it is not you that they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king as they have done from the day I brought them up out of Egypt until this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so they are doing to you. Now listen to them, but warn them solemnly and let them know what the king who will reign over them will claim as his rights. Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, this is what the king who will reign over you will claim as his rights. He will take your sons, he will make them serve with his chariots and horses, and he will run in front of his chariots. Or sorry, they will run in front of his chariots. Some he will assign to be commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties, and others to plow his ground and reap his harvest, and still others to make weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and bakers. Genderist. <laughs> <laughs> More blasphemy. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive gro- groves and give them to his attendants. He will take a tenth of your grain and of your vintage and give it to his officials and, and attendants. Your male and female servants and the best of your cattle and donkeys he will take for his own use. He will take a tenth of your flocks and you yourselves will become his slaves. 
When that day comes, you will cry out for relief from the king you have chosen, but the Lord will not answer you in that day. But the people refused refused to listen to Samuel. No, they said, we want a king over us. Then we will be like all the other nations with the king to lead us and to go out before us and fight our battles. When Samuel heard all that the people had said, he repeated it before the Lord. The Lord answered, listen to them and give them a king. Yeah. And I think, I think that's a, I love that. And now I'm going to, I'm going to hand out the comprehension test for that, that Andy just read. Well, he will fight all our battles, even though mm. what God told Samuel to say is like, Hey, let him know he's going to send you to war. He's going to take your shit. Is this what you want? It, it seems like God is sort of acquiescing to the people. All right. You want to be like other nations. You don't want me as your king. Have your own king. Fine. There See you how go. that goes for you, douchebags. Which is uh, s- uh, our old former pastor Todd. That's my paraphrase. In case you're share, <laughs> shared definition of God's wrath, which is giving you over to your your sins, and so this is consequences. Yeah, the consequences of your sins, which is to say, all right, this is what you've asked for. I I won't protect you. And so I th- I think that runs contrary to what Josh is doing with this. Uh, and this is the problem with biblical inerrancy is where like any one verse has to be the same authoritatively than the other. And so you read Paul in Romans 13, it seems pretty clear, like God, no, God establishes all authorities and maybe he does. But right now, my opinion is that either Paul was wrong or maybe given that it's a letter to the Romans, is it possible that he wanted the letter to be circulated without the Roman authorities freaking out? And so he's throwing them a bone like, Hey, make sure you follow these guys over here. Even though the letter to the Romans is like this brilliant discourse on like how to be like Christ in the world that they were living. Yeah. Or is it even just that God has established the concept of authority and that it exists and that. Yeah. You, you, do you just love filling in those gaps, Zach? The what ifs. You, you love it. Because the Bible, the Bible does leave, it leaves room for what ifs. It, well, it, but it's like it's in like Mad opinion. Libs. It's Mad Libs. You just fill in the fill in the yeah, open. Just make it what you want. <laughs> yeah, right. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, you know Jeff, what I'm you talking get about. Me now? Yeah. <laughs> Bla- blasphemy of the blasphemy. Holy Spirit. Yeah, blasphemy, bro. The Holy Spirit. All right, let's get um, let's get Josh's full clip rolling here. Let's let's but, let uh, him lay out his thing. Yeah, were you gonna say something? Yeah, I was gonna say. You know, by the way, it's I think it's fascinating that the authority is given to the government. And the government is like, well, you know, majority rules, and this is the government because we've all voted them in. However, when it comes to Christian, being a Christian, we're we're the minority, and we're to act, you know, we're to act a certain way, hopefully naturally, just because from the Holy Spirit. But the government and and Christians have they there's a conflict there. In that the majority, because government is not Christian, I don't know if that was the hope of God, but it doesn't seem like it's, it, it seems like the two sides are beset against each other. And that's, that I don't understand. I don't comprehend, hey, follow the government, do what the government tells you, give to the government, give, you know, give Caesar, you know, what is his, and, and like give to God what is God's. And I'm like, why was that set up that way? What does the opposite look like? Maybe that's why. It's like husbands and wives. It's like, is was it all set up this way? Because there's uh, there those are complete that. the well, the opposites the the idea of the idea of opposites in now we are forced to We're not like I'm um, words like endure and you know coexist. end up coming through. It's like yes, there's yes coexist, but respond in a way that's that's of the Holy Spirit. Even though th- this d- that doesn't make any sense why this is, but I'm going to respond in the way that jesus would respond and it certainly wouldn't it would just be out of i i hate to say not passiveness but there's something about it it's like you just go and and do what you're doing 
and I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing. Girls barely like football. That like that? <laughs> I think that's exactly correct. <laughs> oh, well, I just imagine like there is an idea of of a if if I thought of Christians in a not your version of anarchy, but like in an anarchist sense where they're constantly going against the government, like I imagine what that world looks like. And that feels like chaos, right? Where it's like, I'm not respecting government's laws. I'm doing whatever I want to do. Anytime the government does or says anything, I'm consistently against it. Right. And, and yes. I, I imagine that, and that doesn't, that doesn't feel like Christian or non-Christian civility. And so maybe that's, maybe that's the kind of thing that like God is trying to say is like, Hey, you're not, this is not a good representation in the world. If all you're doing is completely rejecting and denying, and like if you just went out and broke laws all the time, because you're like, well, screw it, it's it's the government. I'm, they should not have any authority over me at all. That doesn't society won't be able to function in that way. I go in, I can steal whatever I wanted to steal. But that's the thing, society. Society is not. I mean, not everybody is is Christian and. And not everybody making laws are Christian as well, and they're trying to box people into certain rules and laws and things that they have to do or can't do. And I'm like, that you're not coming from a Christian values perspective. You're coming from a control power perspective, and that's certainly not what Jesus is about. So why are we to follow a, a, a governing body that yeah. w- would set up things that decrease our, our, our freedom, decrease our ability to be, you know, good people and help others. Uh, Cause like, for example, the church has been castrated in, in what they actually do as a organization because the government has, you know, opened up entities where, in a very crass way of, of helping people and, and those that are running those organizations make millions of dollars. It's like, I know it's a totally different podcast, but you know, it's the idea of like the church was there to, to be the helping hand. Hey, go to the church. They can help you. And now it's like, Oh, go to the government. And there's some, you know, there's 10 different organizations, 501 C threes or NGOs that you can get hooked up with. And, you know, I'm like, what happened here? We've lost like the ability for churches to, enact what you know they do which is be the hands and feet of jesus it's like did that's does is that stopping churches from doing that it it doesn't stop it but it it hasn't it's actually kind of crucified a little bit of what the church is there nice. for crucified that's wow. good and i don't know i don't know if i agree with that I will say though, th- is there any agency like is there any responsibility on the church for not stepping up one could say hey yeah, church, you drop the ball. And in the absence of you stepping up, other entities needed to step up and fill that void. I think that coin flips both directions too, where people give less to charitable organizations because of government stepping in and filling those gaps, which I, I don't think is a good thing overall. Like government saying, hey, we'll give you your basic needs. We'll do these welfare programs. And I'm not against like some sort of safety net for people that really need it. It didn't used to be that way, which is maybe what you're saying. It's like the church used to be the primary right. like frontline uh give to the needy, help the poor, take take care of the underprivileged. Right. There was a, a a Christian civility within the church that was there to, you know And since you asked, that's the Sermon on the Mount, basically. It's yeah. like the church's mission. Yes. Quit trying to flex. <laughs> Guys, I got I got kicked by a horse. Can you see? I think I got kicked by a horse right here. <laughs> I'm gonna kick you right now. <laughs> we here to pump you All up. Right. <laughs> we teased it. We're not doing a good job. Let's go back to let's let's let him get his full thought out or here. Or we're doing a great job. Yeah. Well, that was ba- the point of that was like that God a cha- God invented the the idea of the state, which you let us know what you think about that because I I disagree with that. I think there's a what's going on is like this. Hey, you want this? God, God gave us over to like, hey, you want a king? Here's what's going to happen. Now, we Do don't have a king. you think that's the same thing? Um, no, I don't. That's why I disagree with Josh. Like, Turn your thing sideways there. 
But Beep. you're not disagreeing with Josh. You're disagreeing with Paul. I'm just yeah, and I might be doing that too. I'm disagreeing with Josh's interpretation of Paul. I don't think I honestly I think Paul might be throwing a little bit of love towards the Roman government, so his letter would not be stifled and confiscated and people arrested. Well, He's the, saying, "Hey, the government's cool, but also read the rest of the letter." As opposed did, to just take this verse and this is ironclad. Hey, anybody that's in power, God put them there. And I I disagree with that wholeheartedly. Like, so you're you're under a dictator. Do what the dictator did. God has him there. It's like, fuck that. Who would agree with that? Everyone would have a line where they would break with this verse. I feel like I'm about to go Big Lebowski. Am I no, wrong? No. Am I wrong? <laughs> you're not wrong. <laughs> you're just an asshole. <laughs> go ahead. I just, quote. just just knowing more about <laughs> The two words that should that I would like to understand more in this context it, are authorities <laughs> and established. It, by the way, I did, I did fact check. Uh, everyone is subject to the governing authorities, you know, and God set it up. All right, let's let's continue. Thank you, Jeff. Finally, let me make something. Uh, uh, what I hope is obvious. To I us. jump forward a couple if minutes. Godly people. Thank God. won't lead their nation through voting. If godly people won't lead their nation, godless people will. God, the only people that are left become godless people. This is what the book of Proverbs means when it says this. Was when that a the warning? When righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked rule, people groan. Uh, so I'm going to say something that has a bit of an edge to it, that's but I groan. need you to understand this biblically. <laughs> when Christians do not vote, what they're doing is they're abdicating their leadership position in the constitutional republic that God has placed you in. And it's a form of passive rebellion against God. That's a good place to pause. Yeah. I listened to the whole thing. Um, on a side note, he reminds me of the redheaded modern family uh, gay. I thought you <laughs> said it was Elon Musk. No, now that he's facing us, Jeff, now he's a new character. Who is this? He, now it's the man. It, it's the mannerisms. Can I just yeah, say anyway. though, Jeff? And I, I forgive me. I already made one joke about your oversized shirts. That's what a fitted shirt looks like, Jeff. Doesn't look good. It looks pretty good. You could do that too, Jeff. Rose Bibles and Beer is brought to you by True Classic Tees. <laughs> oh, Jeff broke the fourth wall. That was perfect. That was perfect. Uh, I love that. That's my favorite moment of the podcast so far, <laughs> which is a thing I'm going to start doing right now is d declaring my favorite moment of the podcast. All right. Let it be so, known. Okay. So he's basically saying you are uh, abdicating your responsibility um, to God as a Christian if you don't vote. And you're in slight, did you say slight or mild? Misalignment. Slight rebellion. Rebellion. Slight rebellion. You're in a mild form of rebellion against God if you don't vote. Now, you guys tell me what you think right after I tell you what I think. <laughs> um, I don't, I, I'm not going to vote for either major party t ticket the, today. And I don't hold judgment against anybody who is going to do that and feels very strongly about that. Caveat's over. But, do you guys think I am in rebellion against God? Now, I have very specific reasons that are well thought out. I'm not disconnected from the political re realities of the world. No, you're voting. According to you him. Are, are you going to, him, to vote? Yeah, you are voting by not voting. Yeah, I mean, no, I know you're trying no, to find... I, did, I didn't clip part of this message, but he goes on to say... Third party votes are not worth it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. If you're making a statement by voting for third party, nope, it's not going to make a difference. I don't know which clips you chose. I did listen to it, and I agreed with more than I disagreed with. And uh, so, are you are you going to go to a clip that talks about voting for third party candidates and how that's throwing your vote away? <laughs> no, okay. I, I didn't do that one. Okay, no. Um, I just love that little mic drop moment of like you're in rebellion, a version of rebellion against God if you don't vote. So. One of the things that he mentions is that a lot of Christians will say, I can't vote in good conscience for either one of these two main candidates because for 
moral reasons or personality reasons or character reasons, I disagree with them. Maybe take out the moral piece. Character reasons, I disagree with them. So the the common one, easy one would be, Abortion. I may agree with Donald Trump's policies, but I don't like who Donald Trump is as a person. And as a result, I don't feel comfortable voting for him. And the argument that he gives is personalities are temporary and there's two, two of them. Personalities are temporary. Policies can last for a long time and be long standing. And the second part of that is we are not called to vote for the perfect candidate. We're called to vote for the one who's closest to representing um, God, I don't more think godly. I don't know if we're called to that, though. Well, the argument that he gave, he, he gives three different styles of leadership. I the, should say I disagree that we're called Bible. to that. Well, are you disagreeing with just saying called or like, are we getting into semantics or to say as a Christian, it's, it's better to do one thing than the other? Well, I will answer your question by saying something differently, <laughs> by not answering your question. Maybe it does answer your question. 